Okay, June 6th, 2018. It's an absolute gorgeous day. I am uh, somewhere around White Cloud, Michigan. Uh, working on some food plots today. Gonna get two new ones established and uh, improve on two other ones that they had going. Um, so we're going to uh, get the Yanmar out and do a little brush hogging. One is completely new. One is over right over my shoulder back there. Um, Got to do some brush cutting. There's some sweet ferns. And then uh, we'll come back and start tilling them. And we're going to use organic fertilizer with lime mixed in it on this plot. So I'm going to show you what they look like now. Kind of some of the process. And then when I get the organic fertilizer, we'll get that tilled in. We're going to plant soybeans this, um, well, I guess, early summer. But what we're doing is we're just trying to get something growing and then get these plots established quicker than um, using that organic fertilizer than hopefully any other way. So here we go. All right, real quick here, I'll try to show you this one plot with lots of grass in it. And we're probably probably gonna take a walk around here make sure there's no fawns bending here but you'll see I'm gonna brush hog it and then we're gonna start tilling it um, but right here is an indication of common mullion so when we till it I know what's gonna happen either late this year or early next year there's going to be all those great big fuzzy weeds that we don't necessarily want in here like now, you're probably thinking, why were we taking this nice little grass field and making it a food plot? Well, that's what just we proposed. I proposed a couple different things. But what we're going to turn this into is we're going to add switchgrass to this food plot. So it will also, it'll, we're kind of converting this from just a grassy field and seeing all the way across it to four different plots and switchgrass in between so also provide cover and food at the same time really there is very little no actually I don't see any food value here whatsoever so we either got to get rid of the grass and then promote Forbes which I proposed uh, to do as well or plant food plots so that's what, the route we're gonna go with this just over the tractor uh, less than a hundred yards is that field I showed you over my over my shoulder and that's a bigger field and that'll be also a food plot so we're getting attraction in here and providing more food that's the idea hey thoughts from the tractor here as you look out the window here you'll see some milkweed some of that daisy stuff sweet fern lots of grass there's some broadleaf weeds underneath there and there. Um, and then this, those stalk looking things are the common mullion that are usually green and they have the little yellow seeds. Millions of seeds have already spread throughout this thing. There, and all this stuff is, all this stuff you see is gonna come up as soon as you put some steel into the ground. You start tilling or disking or doing anything, you start activating all of that stuff worse than what you see it now. When I bid this for the client, I couldn't see none of this stuff. It was uh, early April. None of this stuff was growing. Um, <laughs> you know, you can see indications of ferns and stuff like that, but they're really only the sweet ferns that are out here. Now, when I make a decision, you know, I'm the, my business is called Complete Deer Management, and I manage the hunting properties for deer and a lot of my clients are deer driven but I do consider other wildlife when doing these things now with all those pollinators out there it it makes me think and wonder oh boy that's good monarch butterfly like milkweeds and monarch butterflies are struggling right now bees are struggling native bees are struggling so you got all those daisies out there, all those pollinators and stuff, and I'm cutting them off right now. 
So I have to consider all of this stuff when I do make a decision to turn this into a food plot. The ultimate decision comes down to the property owner. And that's what I'm going to do for the most part. Now, if something's illegal or I'm destroying something, I will not do that. That will reflect on my reputation and I won't stay in business very long. You do shady things, you do, um, you know, destroy habitats and whatnot. You can't do that sort of thing. But, again, this is deer driven. Now, the things I put back in here are going to benefit more wildlife, but is it going to benefit bu monarch butterflies and and bees? Mm, probably not. Now, I look around into the other spots of fields where I'm not touching, and there's some of this weeds. I call them weeds, but there's some of this these plant species out in there. And so we need to promote, eventually we'll be brought up to promote those things into those other areas where we're not going to touch for deer. Hindsight, this is one acre out of a great big section. And it's three minutes going on as my, my little spiel here, and I'm going to cut this off, but just know I really didn't have a point except when you do go to make decisions, all the ramifications of all the different wildlife should be considered. All right, show you real quick what this plot looks like. This is also about one acre. Oh, I have the numbers. I don't have the numbers on me um, in my tractor, but a little less, more weeds, a lot of this... Um, a spotted knapweed, which is very invasive, and that's definitely got to go. Um, but this is really sandy and really rocky uh, area. So, common mullein here. This stuff is common mullein. That grows the stalks right there. And without it being cut and whatnot. Lots of grass. Um, so... We're gonna cut it, we're gonna till it, we're gonna put that organic fertilizer on it. And in three years, we're gonna do that and repeat. And in three years, this is going to be an awesome field producing big bucks.